Cars can be an excellent resource in DayZ and they're not as difficult to build as you may think. In this guide, I'll show you how to fix, repair and drive your very own car, including going through what each one requires to get it going and where you might find the parts needed. If you liked the video, please leave a like. It genuinely helps me so much. I'm such a small channel. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Oh, gas. Yeah, I'm about to take it up the back alley. Wait. Firstly, what cars are there and how can you locate one? There are four cars and a truck you can drive on Vanilla Day Z. Each extremely similar but with little differences. But for now, they are the Ada 4x4, the Olga 24, the Gunter 2, the Sarka 120 and the M3S truck. Not every vehicle you see can be fixed up, but there are versions you can fix up that can be found scattered throughout the map. But if you don't feel like waiting until you randomly encounter one, there is a way you can find the nearest one you're looking for. You can do this by using the iSurvive app or the iSurvive website, link in the description. I'll give you a quick guide exactly how to do this and then we'll move on. You can filter down what you want very easily by clicking here to remove everything from the map and then scrolling down until you find the cars you're looking for. You can highlight every location of every spawnable car on the map. This is great because if you're looking for a specific car such as an Olga, you can turn on the location just for that car. If you find the car you want and you're not 100% if you can do it up, approach it and press the inventory. If this shows up with slots, you're good to go. But when you find one, the next step is to fix it. Focusing just on cars for now, each car usually requires several items. A radiator, a spark plug, a battery, four wheels and some petrol. This is the absolute bare minimum a car usually needs to move and most cars will already have several of them randomly attached when you find them. However, there are a few things you need to know about these items. Apart from the wheels, the other minimum requirements are universal. This means any radiator you find will fit into any car that requires it. Same with the spark plug, battery and of course petrol. But let's take a look at the radiator. When you first fit the radiator, you will then need to add water for it to run safely. Failing to do so will cause the engine to eventually become damaged until it becomes ruined. It will require around 5 or 6 bottles of water to fill it up, but adding even 1 bottle of water can slow the rate at which the engine becomes ruined by quite a bit. And something important to note is, if you fit the radiator, fill it with water and then remove it, even for a split second, the water will disappear. So you'll need to fill it up again by finding the radiator cap and then interacting with it. Without water, you can usually only get around 2 minutes drive time, sometimes a little longer. This is a common reason you find cars abandoned and ruined in weird places. The people driving it just didn't put water in. However, if you don't have water, don't fear. There is still a way you can make it to a water pump or your base if you're careful. The way to do this is simple. As I said, the car will start and drive normal without water in the radiator giving you a couple of minutes of drive time. But as you drive, keep watching out for the engine light. This appears in the bottom left. When the light appears yellow, the engine is taking damage because it's overheating. When the engine light appears orange, you need to get out and fix the engine right away because it's about to become ruined any second. To fix the engine, you will require a pipe wrench and this will fix it back to pristine. Look at the engine and hit the fix. You can then do the same until the orange light appears again. This can usually be done a few times helping you get it to a base or storage. But if that light turns red, or if you approach a car and the little circle next to it is red, it's ruined beyond repair and you can't even enter it. You will, however, be able to remove things from its trunk. And despite the engine being ruined, at no point does the radiator become ruined this way. It's the engine that suffers the damage, meaning if the car becomes ruined because it overheats, in theory, you could still use the parts for another vehicle with a working engine. The car battery, though, is more simple. This just requires a charge and the amount of charge is indicated in the bar below its icon. However, you can find the battery charger and attach it to the battery to get it charged to your required level if the battery doesn't have any charge in it. The spark plug and the petrol require no special information and the petrol can be kept in any container, though a jerry can is always preferred because it carries the most. The amount of petrol you have in the car is displayed on the bottom left above the temperature gauge. To fill it up, approach the cap, which can be located in different places depending on the car, put the container with the fuel in hand and click the interact button. The wheels, however, are specific to each car. So a Gunter 2 will need a Gunter 2 wheel. An Olga will require an Olga wheel and so on and so forth. Now there are some additional things you can add to make the cars more complete 
but they're not required to make the car specifically work. Doors, trunks and hoods can add some protection from zombies, though bullets will still penetrate them and there's no way you can fire back regardless of whether you have a door or not, even as a passenger. I also tested to see if a missing door will get you damp in the rain, but it doesn't seem as though it matters, so you should be protected from the wet even if you're in a car without any doors. And to remove them from your car or from other cars, they usually have to be in the open position. Light bulbs will allow you to travel by night more easily, albeit at the expense of stealth, but when the engine is switched off, running lights can drain the battery more quickly. They can also be seen from a long way away, so be careful. Plus, the car isn't silent either, so be wary of nearby zombies in a local area or pursuing ones that have followed the sound. You don't want to be getting ambushed when you pull over. Unlike the cars, however, the trucks only require a battery but a lot more wheels to work. But note that the battery it requires is a truck battery, so a car battery is of no use here. You can also add storage to them by adding wooden boxes and barrels into the back. This increases the storage a lot and almost makes up for its slow and heavy handling. This is great for moving bases or doing huge trades with other factions. If you crash, you'll likely damage or ruin your engine parts, so keeping spares is always advised, but a few things can be fixed on the go. As discussed, a damaged engine requires a pipe wrench to fix it. Just open the hood and press the interaction button before the engine is ruined. Any doors can be repaired by using epoxy, but not if they're ruined and it will never mend glass. If the glass is broken, there is currently no way in the game to fix the glass. And lastly, tires can be fixed using a tire repair kit. So, you have your car, but how do you drive? Well, all the cars in DayZ are manual, meaning you will have to manually shift them as you drive. To do this, use Q and E on the keyboard, or B and A on the Xbox, and subsequently Circle and X on the PlayStation. Keep in mind you also have to downshift, so if you slow down, knock it down a gear or two to keep that speed consistent. This is all displayed in the bottom left corner. If you shift too late, you'll usually hear this screeching noise. This means you should shift because over revving is not good for the car and will damage the engine. This will be indicated by a red flashing engine light warning you about impending damage, so switch gear or slow down. But when driving, you shouldn't drive too fast anyway. DayZ cars are not the same as Forza cars, and if you go too fast, they can just randomly fly away. There are a million YouTube shorts showing just how devastating this can be. If this does happen and you begin to lift, keep your finger on the brake, and just keep it there no matter how the car moves or shakes. Sometimes this can correct the issue, other times, well, most times, you're out of luck. Just keep calm, hold the brake. I'd like to leave my motor and my collection of improvised tools to my non-existent children. Oh, oh, and unclench. I'd say 40 to 50 kilometers an hour is a reasonably safe speed to try and avoid this issue. Slow and steady is definitely better here. Not only do you lower the risk of a single wipeout, ruining all your car parts as you randomly hit a tree, but glitches and frame rates will be better too. Also, just as an additional piece of information, if you exit the car while it's in neutral, the car will keep running, but if it's in gear, you'll automatically switch it off. If you do spend your time searching for a car, you don't want people taking pieces off it if they find it every time you park up. Luckily, you can lock pieces into place. This means that unless a player has the required tool, they won't be able to just strip your car for parts. To lock doors, hoods and trunks into place, use a wrench. For any engine parts, such as the radiator and battery, you can use a screwdriver and for wheels you can use a tire iron when they're locked into place you'll get this little white tool icon on them but all of this can be a bit fidgety and it's not always easy to find them to lock onto just take your time and it will usually work to find the engine parts you need check garden sheds lockups warehouses and these garages which are scattered around the map if you want to do it quickly it's a numbers game and these lockups are usually good because they're grouped together so they probably give you the best shot at finding supplies quickly take extra care when searching for spark plugs however they are tiny and can sometimes glitch a little through the floor so always be thorough furthermore you can and strip parts from other fixable vehicles. Considering some vehicles spawn with parts in them, it's always worth lifting hoods and checking in there too. Keeping in mind engine parts are universal and the location of spawn points is in the I Survived map as I demonstrated before. So it might be worth checking to see if there are any cars nearby so you can try and loot them for parts. For jerry cans, 
These can be found in the places mentioned before, plus I've had quite a bit of luck with train carts. And if you need to fill them up or water bottles or pots with petrol, find any petrol station and approach the pumps with a container to collect the fuel. For doors, trunks and hoods, once you have a car working, you can just keep driving around and stopping when it's safe nearby any similar car to check if it has something you can use. They can usually also be found in the places mentioned earlier and the colours don't have to match for the part to fit. Not a tip, but just in my experience, if I find a car half complete, the rest of the things needed to get it working are usually in whatever town or city I'm in. So if you find one, searching the town properly might help you out. Like everything else in DayZ, finding car parts is a skill more than it is luck, and it doesn't always need to take you a long time to do it. Though speaking from experience, at first, it probably will. For ease and quickness, personally, I like the soccer. It's absolutely not the best in any respect, the Olga is faster, the Aida is better off road, but I prefer how it handles compared to them. Plus being found near the coast and industrial sites, I've been able to get this car quicker than any other on the road before. Plus a huge benefit of it is, when you crash, and you will crash because trying to steer the car in DayZ is like trying to dock a boat in a storm, when you crash because it's rear engine, you usually only ever damage the radiator and not the engine, a spark plug or battery. Also good to note, the Ada is a two-door vehicle with four seats, meaning you have to slide the front seat down to enter the rear of the car, so you won't need to find four doors for this particular model. It's also a decent go-to for off-roading, however if you are in a gunfight, it will take longer for your rear passengers to be able to leave the car, if they can leave at all. Chances are, if you get in that back seat and somebody fires, you're not getting out alive. You know, people always post gunfights and battles, but for me with Daisy, I love the moment of peace. Where you can just relax and don't have to Never mind, screw me then, let's go. And that's the end of the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. I always try to answer them when I see them. If you found anything here of value or use, please leave a like and a subscribe. Or maybe just drop me a comment and never see me again. Either way, I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.